There's a sweet anointing in the sanctuary. Can we just lift up our voice for the next few minutes? Begin to release your incense. Come on, begin to release your incense. Come on, let your voice be elevated. Come on, let your voice be elevated with the lifting of your hands and the lifting up of your voices. Come on, begin to glorify our God. Begin to magnify him. Come on, worship him, worship him. Come on, worship him, worship him. Come on and exalt the name of the Lord. Father, we exalt you. We love upon you, O oh God. We love upon you, O oh God. We love upon you, O oh God. Come on, give him the fruit of your lips. Come on, give him the fruit of your lips. Come on, give him the fruit of your lips. Let your voice be elevated all over the room. Come on, give it to him. Give it to him. Give it to him. It's by his grace and by his mercies that we are here today. It's because he loved us. It's because he loved us. It's because he cared about us that we're alive to testify. Somebody help me honor this great God. For your love is kind. Your love is patient. You fill my heart with so much peace and joy. And you are amazing. You make my life feel brand new. But you are amazing. You make my life feel brand new. For your love is kind. Sing your love is patient. Your love is patient. You fill my heart with so much peace, with so much peace and joy. With so much 
much peace, with so much peace and joy. We are amazing, you're amazing. You make my life, you make my life feel brand new. Sing all your promises are yes, all your promises are yes. And amen, and amen. You're not a man, you said that
It's amazing. Your love. 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 It's amazing. Your love. It's amazing.
for service. But today I, I want to teach on the secret of waiting on God. I truly believe this will bless you. The secret of waiting on God. First of all, let's go to Romans 8, 24 and 25. The secret, this is a secret that I, I want to reveal to you today. Why do we wait on God? Is waiting on God part of the plans of God? Well, let's go to Romans 8, 24 and 25. I want to start with this scripture. It talks about hope and also about wait. Father, we thank you for your word. Even the presence of God is already here. Amen. What an awesome praise and worship. Can, can we bless the Lord for all of gladness? Amen. Man, I was enjoying it until I look at the time. I said, whoops, one o'clock, almost one o'clock. Oh my goodness, but that was good. We bless God for that. Yeah, time is not the issue in the presence of God. Amen. Amen. I get carried away. I was lost there myself. Amen. I was worshiping. I was praying. I was declaring. You know, when you see me walking around like that, I'm declaring some stuff to be sold. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Sister Carla is with us today. Amen. 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 Where's well, Dr. Brian and your son? Amen. Praise God. Now, let's get started. Romans 8, 24 and 25. It says, For we were saved in this hope. But hope that is seen is no hope. Hope that is seen it's no hope. If you see what you are hoping for, it's no hope. Right? It's no hope. You already see it. You already have it. You see, why do one still hope for what he sees? Why? You see, but if we hope for what is not seen, we eagerly wait for it. Hallelujah. Now, when we hope, that means God has already promised us he's going to do it. That means we have already received what God has promised. No, you didn't get that. No, you didn't get that. We've already received it. The difference between receiving, oh, you didn't get it, I told you, you didn't get it. The difference between what? Receiving and having it. The Bible says, when you pray, believe, you receive. Not only when you pray, but when there's a prophetic word, and God give you prophetic word, Believe you will receive. Then you will have it. This is where hope comes in. 
Because also faith is trusting the unseen. Not the unknown. I already know. It is mine. I already receive it. Because the mouth of the Lord has spoken. I am receiving because I have prayed. Prayer of faith. So I have it. I receive it. But I don't have it yet. So the Bible says, but if we hope for what we do not see, then what happens? We eagerly. We what? Eagerly what? Wait for it with perseverance. And sometimes that's why it's missing, missing. We eagerly wait, but there's no perseverance. Eagerly wait to me, you are hasty to receive what God has spoken. But if you don't attach it with perseverance, you will give up. Perseverance means I will not give up until I have it. It doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter what I'm going through. I have already made up my mind. I'm not giving up. Not losing up until I have it. It doesn't matter if I'm going through trial. It doesn't matter if I'm going through tribulation. It doesn't matter if I make an economy is good. Because my economy is not the economy of this world. My economy is a kingdom. Oh God of heaven, Father, I thank you. Father, we bless you. Glory to God. So the Bible says, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. Today I want to talk to you a little bit, for a few times, for a few minutes. The secret of waiting on God. What is the secret of waiting on God? But let's start, let's go to Isaiah 40, 31. I will give some scripture. Say, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up. They shall what? They shall what? With wings like eagles. They shall run and not will it. They shall walk. And now what? Now, let, let's go to amplify the version of this. I love it. Can I take my time today? Let's take it. It will be part one and part two. I can't finish today. I really enjoyed the praise of worship. Even I wanted to continue. It was good. Amen. Let's go to amplify. Is it for those who wait on the law? Who expect Look for hope in him. We gain the strength. A new okay, let's start again. I'm excited. I have to take my time. Can I teach today? But those who wait on the who expect look for and hope in. Pay attention. Hope in. Not out, not on the object, but the person that promised the object, the giver, not the gift, the giver of the gift. Put your hope in him, not the object, not the house, not the car, not the business, not the job, but in him. Yay! In him. That promise. Not only he have car in him, he have out in him, he has blessing in him, he has hope in him, he got everything in him. If he promise you car in him, he will give you more. That's what we call fringe benefit. Come on, somebody help me. And help today. Amen. So but for the Lord. Who expect, look for, hope in him, we gain a new strength. No strength is expired. The old strength cannot make you to where you are going. The old strength cannot make you to mount. 
up as an eagle. Oh, we're going somewhere. See this. As a what? He said they will lift up their wings. How can you lift up your wings? Not with the whole strength, but the new strength. And rise up. To who? Come on, church, talk to me. To who? Close to who? So when you are waiting, you are moving closer to God. When you are eagerly expecting with perseverance, God give you a new strength. Because the old strength cannot make you to back up. To and rising towards the sun. They will run and not become weary. They will walk and not go tired. Amen? Now let me give you another scripture. Psalm 27, 14. Psalm 27, 14. It's waiting part of God's plan. Let me ask you this question, church. I know sometimes we are waiting where we are not supposed to be waiting. But waiting on God for what he promised, is it part of God's plan? Can I hear that? Can I hear yes? Yes! We, call, we declare this year is a year of divine manifestations. Some things have manifest, but not everything. Some things we manifest this second half of 2024. So all we need to do is to what? Expect and look and wait on him. Now let's go to Psalms 27, 14. He said, wait on the Lord and be of good courage. And it shall strengthen your heart. Wait on the Lord. It will strengthen your heart. So we know now that waiting on God is part of God's plan. Can I hear amen? But there are three lies the enemy usually lies to us when we are waiting. Please note this. There are three lies. The enemy will say God is late. And delay is winning. Delay comes from the enemy. Delay do not come from God. Please note that. It's the enemy that delays us from receiving from God. It's the enemy. God wants to bless everybody. It's come from waiting on the Lord is always part of his plan. If God has spoken and you are waiting, you are in God's plan. But you have to wait with expectation. You have to wait with perseverance. In other words, you have to make a decision that I'm not going to give up until I have it. So one of the lines is the enemy said God is late. God never late. There's a song. It's an on time God. Come when you want it. It's always on time. God is not late for your. Amen. The enemy is the one that delay. God does not delay. It's an on time God. Number two, the enemy will say opportunities are passing you by. When we are waiting on God, listen to me, please. That's what I want to teach today. Is that all right? When we are waiting on God, we do not miss opportunities. If you are waiting on God, we do not miss opportunity. No, it will open and close door according to his purpose. It will be one that open doors for us. So you are not missing opportunity when you are waiting on God. If God has spoken, continue to wait. As you continue to wait, God will strengthen you. As God strengthens you, mount your wing like eagle. In other words, you will move closer to God. To mount your wings like eagle, up like eagle, it means to move closer to God. Amen? Come on, church. Amen? 
Oh, we are going somewhere. Number three. The enemy would lie that no one else is waiting, only you. The devil is... All of us are waiting for something. There's some things God did in the first half of 2024. There's some things we are waiting for in the second half of 2024. All of us are waiting on God. You are not the only one waiting. Amen. Sometimes you say, well, my trials is different from everybody else because I've been waiting for so long. The devil is a You are not the only one waiting. Everybody is waiting on God. Amen. When your time comes, God will do what he has promised. Amen. Now, what are the secrets? What are the secrets of waiting on God? Why do we have to wait on God? One thing we have to understand, we are not waiting on God because God is not ready. Hello, church. We are not waiting on God because God is not ready. We are waiting because we are not ready for what God is about to deliver. No. When God say a thing in the spiritual realm, it's ready. It's already done. God don't have afterthought. When he says something, I will give you a house. The house is already done. But you probably not ready to receive what God wants to give you. God will not give us what we cannot handle. God will not give us what we cannot manage. God will not give us what we are not ready to have. Are you hearing me? So why is Porter, what? Number one, waiting on God produces patience, fruit of the Spirit. It produces patience, a fruit of the Spirit. Waiting on God strengthens our faith. What I have learned in receiving from God, that means that it means that your faith measure, measure for what you are trying to get. Your faith level. That's what the, the Lord give us what? Measure of faith. There's some things God has spoken to some of us. Our faith is not there yet to receive it. So waiting on God will strengthen our faith. Not only that, he will give us what? Patience. He will give us patience. So we will be able to endure trials and tribulations. It will help us to build patience. Trials and tribulations are tools that God uses to build our patience and to build our character. <laughs> so waiting on God, strengthening our faith, and like trials and tribulations, help to build patience. And patience, character of Christ in us. Some things God wants to give us. Some people probably don't have the character to handle it. Let me tell you something, the difference between gifts and character. Gifts will catapult. Your calling. But gift 
cannot maintain the level that give will catapult you. It cannot maintain it. What? No, I have to do. What will maintain your level when you get up there is your character, not your gift. It's your character. And do you have the character to carry the anointing of God? Do you have the character? To carry deliver ministry of God. Because they're going to talk about you. They're going to gossip about you. They're going to hate you. The devil is going to tell them and lie after you. Do you still have the character to continue to stay up there? Hmm. Character. If the character is not there to sustain that level... God will not give it. He will not give it. You know, the character has to be there to sustain the level that God wants to take you. Waiting on God. God is working on us. He's giving us patience. Some fools want to be pastor, but they don't have no patience. There's no patience. Yeah, there's a lot of Facebook ministry. Even Facebook ministry, they can't handle it because they have no patience. Patience. Then produces character. Hallelujah. When this oh, produces patience. Go allow trials and tribulation to build your patience. I want it now. God got to give it now, you know. Go and do it now. He do it when you have more patience. When you have the good character. To be able to maintain the level God is taking you. God is going to take you high. But you have the character to sustain it. Thank you, man. The church is quiet today. When church is quiet like that, that is penetrating. I love it. Character. Process works. Process? <laughs> Some of the strict wit, the important of waiting of God is to produce his patience, a fruit of the spirit. Waiting on God strengthens our faith. And like trials and tribulation, help us to build. Patience and patience produces character. Character to be a leader. Some of us have been prophesied over that we're going to be a good leader. We're going to be in the prophetic ministry. We're going to be a pastor. Amen? That's a process. That's the patience that is needed. Character that is needed. Gift is good. It will take you high. But gift... Cannot keep you up there. That's why I see some people go high because of their gift. Next week they fall down because they try to escape process. They escape what? Process. I mean, we sang a song today, Fire. I want to be purified by fire. You better be careful. You, you, you better be what you are praying. And sing it. I want to be fire, purify, hallelujah. If you see fire, purify, gold, I purify gold. It's painful, it's difficult. I'm telling you, you want to be purified? Are you ready to be purified? Are you ready to face that trial and that tribulation? Because God will use trials and tribulation to purify you, to change you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I want to be purified. It's a good song. Sing it. Sing it. I want to be purified. It's what it means. Process. Trials. Tribulation. To change you. To transfigure you. Yeah, it's a good song. We're going to sing it again. I want to sing it. I want to sing it. Amen. I want you to sing it. 
Aleluia! Glória a Deus! I said, I want to be leading my message in the spirit. I want to be what? Oh, that try? Yeah. Try by fire. And when fire comes, run. Confront it. Go in the fire. Fire is good. Fire is good. Tribulation is good. It will build your character. It will, oh my God, it will change you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I like that's what I want to be tried. Hey, that's my message. Thank you for singing that. And I declare it shall come to pass. That's why we wait on God. God used fire to purify us. God used tribulation to give us patience. You are not in control. God is in control. You have to wait when God finished. Oh, God. I want to be tried. By fire, purify. That's process. It's a process. You are what? Oh, we are going there. You have to surrender. <laughs> That's the message. But waiting on the Lord is a secret. Allow God to perfect what He has started. Allow God. So in the process of waiting, the importance of waiting, it produces patience. And patience produces character of Christ in us. Please make note if you are writing that. Patience produces character of Christ. In us. Number two, it develops our character to prepare us for our blessings. I want to be tried by fire. Oh my God. I like that song. I want to be tried by fire. Glory, what? Purify. Oh my God. Do you know the process of purification? Do you know it? Oh my God. All right, let's move fast. It develops our character to prepare us for our blessings. Developing our character prepares us not only to lose the blessings we receive, you are in a season of waiting on the Lord. So it is God preparing you for the blessing that is coming. That the blessing that is coming. God promised a blessing. God promised all of us. But what God will do, He will prepare us. So that the secret of waiting on God. It's a season of it's a season of preparation. God prepare our character to be able to undo the promise. Number three, the importance of waiting on God is reveal if we truly love God or if we don't. It reveal. If you truly love God, if you truly love God, you will wait regardless of how long it's going to take. It will reveal if we truly trust God or we don't. I have learned this when I'm going through big trials and tribulation. That's the time I really know my good friend. When I'm going through intense trials, those that don't truly love you, they're the first one.
to say, I love you, but I got to go. All this year, they didn't go nowhere. They sit there because everything is good. So when you are going through, it's revealed if you truly love God or trust God or you are in to receive from God. Or you are there to seek the hands of God. How many trust God here? How many truly, truly trust God? Even though you don't receive the blessing yet, do we truly, truly trust God? How do we know? Will you continue to serve God? Will you continue to shout fire? Even though there's no blessing. Will you continue to shout fire? Even though God has not answer your prayer. Will you continue to come to the prayer line? And continue to praise God. Will you continue to praise God standing doing praise and worship without changing your countenance? Some people in the church, when you go into a can tell, don't look at your face. Are you hearing me? So it reveals if we truly trust God or we don't. It has Post the nature of our heart. The nature of our heart. And show us the area we need to grow. Please note this. When we are waiting on God, that's the time we will know our weaknesses. It will reveal the area we need to work on. Those are the secrets. It reveals. It will reveal if you don't have patience. And if you don't have patience, that means you don't have the character that is needed. It reveals. It reveals the level of our faith in God. Oh my God. And when you reveal it, that means we have to work on it. Amen. That means we have to work in that area so we can receive from God. That means that area, we are weak in those areas that need to be worked on. I will tell you, when I came, I was in college. I went to New Mexico Military Institute. I'm a kind of, a kind of person. In the beginning, I don't have patience. If something to be done, it will be done now. I follow time to the T. I'm serious. I don't like, if I wait for you, I don't wait for you, I will leave you. If I wait and wait and wait and wait, if I wait, then I got to go. That's so much I will tell you. She will tell you. So when I was in college, the military school, they will inspect our room every Saturday. Your bed has to be clean, everything, your brass, you got to shine everything. And then when they come, you have to be ready. You will stand by your double bunk and get your rifle. They will come into the room. You are in the military. You know what I'm talking about. Man! That was a big triumph for me. So the guy will come. My, my bed is ready, but my roommate was the slowest person on campus. I'm serious. Every time I bed room, Always fail, not because of me. The guy just take his time. And in military, it's teamwork. It's teamwork. You know? So my bed is ready, everything is ready, but this guy just taking his time. Even if I tell him, all the all, then he will stop and begin to talk. Even when you talk, he talks so slow. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. 
Oh, no. I'm serious. True story. I told Pastor Marshall. Very slow. So I didn't talk. He just said, you will stop. I said, they're coming. Hurry up. They sent me Joe. It's slow. So, I said, God, give me a new roommate. <laughs> Some of you are praying. <laughs> Change this person. Get rid of this person and put this person in my life. I prayed, honest. I prayed. I don't remember if I fast, but maybe I did. I don't remember. I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and I prayed for prayer. This guy will not change and they didn't get rid of him. So one day, <laughs> after I realized all my shouting and my screaming, didn't change the guy. The more I speak, it becomes even slower. Oh, Jesus! I pray to God. If you don't move him, move me. You know how you pray. God, if you don't move him, move me. Get me out of here. I can't stand the guy. It was years after I realized that guy, God was using some that I think is slow, is weak to make me be patient. What you call slow, God use it. <laughs> oh my God. I pray and I pray. Nothing changed. Then one day I said, something got to change up in here. Nothing changed. I'm serious. So one day, I already finished me and got everything done. The guy was just walking around, taking his time. I said, there come inspections. It's going to happen. Something coming. And that something was the Holy Spirit. Stop shouting. What you need to do? Go help him. Go help him. So then I decided, when we're doing this, just walk by and make help him and make him uh, do his best. Even when I was doing the best, the guy just stopped. <laughs> True story. He stopped. Oh, he coming. Sammy Joe. You don't have to do that. What do you mean? I said to myself, what do you mean? You don't have to do that. Every time we get in trouble. You don't have to do what? So when he was talking, I didn't even mind him. I was doing it. He said, you don't have to do it. I did everything I get for him. Everything was ready. I get, said, okay, do you shine your blood? Well, <laughs> I took it. I shined it for him. Uh, I go, oh, Sammy Joe. Thank you. When he was talking, I did talk to him. I do what, what I need to do. Then when they are coming, I still. His bed was ready. Everything was ready. That day, we passed. Patience produces character. I see that my character changed. Instead of shouting and screaming, hey, yeah, it's not working. And I begin to do it. God used it to purify. <laughs> Some of us need to be purified. The blessing that is coming is big. You are not ready for the blessing. God is preparing you to be able to receive what is coming. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Number three, it reveals if we truly trust God or we don't. Now, what time do I have? Okay. What are the right attitudes when waiting on God? That's the meat now. What is the right attitude? Now we know the importance. We know what God is trying to do to prepare us to receive, to produce patience, to develop our character so we can prepare to receive the blessing. It's revealed if we truly trust God or if we don't. So what are the true attitudes? Which attitude do we have? Number one. Expect with confidence because God is faithful. 
expect with confidence because God is faithful. As you wait, don't let doubt kill your faith. Doubt kills faith. Expect with confidence that God is faithful. Can you say God is faithful? God is faithful. Expect God to come true because he always does. Expect it. Every prophetic word expected, you've received. Now allow God to protect what is lacking. Allow God to work on your patience, on your character. Amen. To strengthen your faith. James 1, 6 and 7. 1, 6 and 7. You can read that, but let him act in faith with no doubting. For he who doubt is like a wave of the sea driven toes and toes by the wind. For let that man supposed to have received from the Lord. God wants you to be expectant, to have faith in him. Amen. Number two. Choose to endure to the end. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Endurance is a matter of choice. Amen. Endurance is a choice. Choose to stay until the end. And that you will quit. When trials and tribulations come. Make a choice today. Make that decision today. I have made up my mind. I can't quit. There's no way to go through. I'm trying not to, to order up and finish. But. When Elijah. Saw so Elisha the first time. What was he doing? He was plowing. Remember? He was plowing. And he threw his mantle on him. Matthew, mantle symbolized covering. He also symbolized he covers. Now I'm going somewhere. Not to only cover a person, but to cover Elisha's agenda. Do what? To cover Elisha's agenda. So that the agenda that will be following is the agenda of Elijah. Another time we will teach that. It's to cover. But he did something. When Elijah was going, Elijah was upset. He said, let me go. And do what? Say bye-bye to my parents. You know? But he did something. When he went, he destroyed all the instruments. Who remember that? He destroyed all the instruments that he used for plowing. You know what that means? That means he can't go back. That means he can't go back to his old ways. He has given up his old ways. His agenda is covered. Now he's following Elijah. Some fool still holding on to their past. They're still holding on to their past. So they have a place to go back to. But if you destroy your path, you have nothing to go back to. You always moving forward. You have no choice. And to pass the something, he said, I have no choice. I have to endure to the end. I don't have no way to go to. Oh God of heaven. Some people still holding on. If you don't work out here, I will go back there. 
destroy your hold. And make up your mind today. I'm not going back. I'm moving forward. Hallelujah. 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 You got to destroy your past. That you have no choice to go back. Only to go forward. Oh God, all this revelation coming. Yay. Yay. Do you know the children of Israel? When they left Egypt. By the rest of it, There was a shorter route. Hello? There was a what? A shorter route. But God said, you see, God was thinking. When you go to Exodus, you can see him thinking. He said, if I take them to the shorter route, the shorter route, route have no receive. When trial comes, when tribulation comes, you know what they will do? They will go back to Egypt. Even they said it. They told Moses, why do you, you know? Can we want to go back? We want to go back. That's told Moses. Because they have a way to go back. God said, I got this. You know what God did? He was thinking. He said, as a leader, I use this for leadership. You have to think ahead of people. If they go to this room, they will come back and go back to Egypt. Because they can't handle trials. They can't handle tribulations. And they don't understand that God is using trial. To build their patience. So you can build their character. For the blessing that is coming. And that's one of the reasons. Some of them didn't get to the promised land. I, I tell you, They didn't get to the promised land. Because the mind is greater than the promise. No you didn't hear that. No you didn't hear that. The mind is greater than the promise. God wants to work on their mind. He wants to renew their mind. He wants to change their mind. If your mind is not changed, you cannot possess the promise. As the man thinks, so he is. Do you have the mind for the breakthrough? Do you have the mind for what you are trusting God for? You know what God did? He took them. He said, I will go the short route. He took them to the Red Sea. They walked through the Red Sea. He told the Red Sea back up. He said, I got this. When trials come, no, try and swim back. They, they can't go back. Are you hearing me? What am I saying? Get rid of the past. There's nothing to go back to. Make a choice to endure to the end. Number three. Let me give you scripture on that. Number two, let me move swiftly. Hebrews 12, 1. Then let me give you number three. Pray until something happens. Pray until you receive the manifestation. Prayer always makes a difference. Even when it doesn't feel or seems doing it. Make your request known to God. Philippians 4, 6. He said, be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known to God. Amen. Be anxious for nothing. That word anxious means don't worry about anything. But pray about everything. Be anxious for what? For nothing. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything. Here and so make your request known to God. Make your request known to God. Now we're going to finish. How do we successfully wait on God? Oh, God, I thank you, Father. Ow! Put your faith in God. Not in the object of your desire.
put your faith in God. Not in the object of your desire. Take your focus off of the object. I'm telling you, it works. Take your focus off of the object. What are you trusting God for? Take your focus off of Put your faith in God. You focus on the giver, not the gift. Faith in God. The Bible says, delight yourself in the Lord. Trust God. Amen. Delight yourself in the Lord. He will do what? Grant you the desire of your heart. God knows those desires. We have to put our faith in God. Amen. Our hope in God. Our trust in God. Faith grant us in hope. Amen. Put your faith in God. Because God is faithful. Not in the object of your desire. If your focus is on the object, take it off. Put it on God. Next one. Trust God with all your heart. What I have learned, if I trust God, be able to have patience to wait. Yes, almost finished. I'm going swiftly. My time's up. Let me give you this too. Trust God with all your heart. If you trust God, you will be able to be patient and to wait on Him. Fill your heart with trust. How do you do that? Go in the scripture and get all the scriptures that talk about trust. Trust in the Lord with all your mind. Trust in the Lord with all your strength. Read the scripture and see where God is faithful. Our God promised people. Read about Abraham at the old age. God fulfilled his promise. Read about Joseph. At the age of 17, his own brother betrayed him. They, at first, they wanted to kill him. They wanted to abhor the vision. But Reuben said, no, we will not kill our brother. What they did, they sold him. You know the story? They sold him in slavery. Amen. Then, the father wife lied against him. That lying spirit is everywhere, you know. Lied against him. But that dream came to pass. That dream, what? Came to pass. I truly believe when you are going trial, God didn't do it, but God allowed it. There's some things God will do, and there's some things God will allow. God allow it, and God will use it as a vehicle to get you where you need to get to. He used it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The boy was so young, he shared his dream with his own brother. If you don't share with his brother, who is he going to share it with? Are you hear what I'm saying? His dream come to pass. Trust God with all your heart. But three, I think they sang that, sang that today to surrender. Surrender your will to God. You already sang it. They will just need to do it now. Do we sing that? Yeah, surrender. Surrender. Surrender your will to God. Impatience is the result of valuing our own will. Impatience. Impatience is the result of valuing our own will. 
if you surrender your will, you have no choice to wait on his will. You, you didn't get that. <laughs> Impatience is the result of what? Value our own will. If you get it of your will, guess what? Do you have a choice? Do you have a will to value? No, you have no will to value. No. Because you have a will. Well, go on to do this, but you know, this one too is nice. Yeah, this look good. What I have learned when God said do this, that tells me there's some things that God knows that I don't know. I made my decision based on my knowledge. Based on what I want? I know. But there's some things I don't know. But if God tells me to do this, God has already knows everything. In no obstacle, in no trials, he knows what is going to happen. It's unknowing God. You know the past, the present, and the future. It's already in the future. We are just still now. We don't even know what's going to happen in the next five minutes. When you surrender your will, that's what I talk about the mantle. Cover your own agenda and say, God, what do you want me? I've surrendered my will. If I tell you to do, that's what I will do. Amen. So, impatience is the result more than God's will. We must learn to surrender our will to Him and accept it in return. Huh? Yes? Oh, don't even go there. In that country, people that know me, they think I'm crazy. You say, yeah? <laughs> they think I'm very, very crazy guy. And I don't know how they're going to figure me out. They think I'm crazy. When I left Zimbabwe to go to Ghana for the project we are working on, then I came to Dubai. We are having a family there with Bemi, and you came and joined me. I told these people I'll be back in three weeks. Three weeks, the workers, we have people. I'll be back in what? Three weeks. Since when? 2002? Going to two years, I've never been back. 22, two years. I haven't been back. I want to go. When we finish in Dubai, my wife's supposed to go back to America. I'm supposed to go back to Zimbabwe. Go, you know, do the church here. That's why. God started to plan the church to help them with the church that they were doing Bible study. I have to stay. I didn't go. I didn't come there. Then when time come, God said, okay, now leave Dubai, go back to where? America. Don't go there. They don't go there. And we've invested so much there. Yeah, we invested so much there. But guess what? My heart is not there. My heart is in God. My will is in God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They think I'm crazy. Two years, I will be back. There's another pastor, that crazy apostle, call himself. It's gone. He's not back. Amen. So let will and take God's will. People will think you are crazy. You are not. You are smart. As many that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Let us stand on our feet. I'm finished. I have to rush this. I'm going to do this. Say, Heavenly Father, can we move quick? Quick, quick. I'm finished. But we've got to do this. 
Before I do this, is anyone here want to give their life to Jesus? Want to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior? If you haven't done that yet, let me see your hand. I will pray for you. I will pray a very simple prayer. Anyone? Anyone? Everyone? Anyone? We are all safe. Sanctify. Amen? Amen. Say this. Heavenly Father, I surrender all my thoughts. Anxiety. Discouragement. I surrender it in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I surrender all thoughts of doubt, anxiety, and discouragement. I declare faith in God in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare fully trusting God his promise. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, say it loud and clear. Say, Heavenly Father, I surrender all my thoughts of doubt, anxiety, discouragement. I surrender it in the name of Jesus. I surrender it in the name of Jesus. And declare, I declare, put my faith in you. I put my faith in you and fully trust you to do your promise, to fulfill your promise in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare over me a new faith. I declare over me a new strength so I can mount my wings up like eagles, means to move closer to God not to stay away from God. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. So today. I declare me. New faith. New strength. New expectation. To begin to arise. That I may endure. That I may endure. Until breakthrough happens. I make up my mind today. That I will endure to the end. So either endure to the end, shall be saved. I made a choice today to endure to the end. In the mighty name of Jesus. So Heavenly Father, release new faith. Release new strength. Release new expectation to arise in me. To arise in me until breakthrough in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare with my mouth, so shall it be. The Bible says, We shall declare a thing and it shall be established. It's established in the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I bless you. Exalt your own. In Jesus' name I pray. Come on, somebody clap your hands and give him praise. Clap your hands and give him praise. Hallelujah. So today in the name of Jesus, by the power of Almighty God, and this message has been taught, the faith comes by hearing. And by hearing the word of God. So, Heavenly Father, they have renounced doubt. Father, I ask you to give them new strength. Give them new faith. Give them new expectation to wait until they receive. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The Lord said, I will do it. Father, just strengthen us to move closer to you. So that we might wait on you. Father, I thank you. And I bless you. In Jesus' name. Come on, somebody give God praise. Come on, somebody give God praise. Come on, somebody give God praise. Somebody give God praise. Today, in the name of Jesus, there's some things I have to do before I go. By the Holy Spirit, I want to declare breakthrough over you. I want to declare it. I'm being led by the Holy Spirit to do this. 
to declare breakthrough over you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That every area of your life will begin to experience breakthrough in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Starting today. So, Father, lift up your hands to heaven. Come on, lift your hands to heaven. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, the name that is above every name, I declare breakthrough over your people in the name of Jesus. A lot of them have been waiting so long, Father God, but they are still waiting. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, the name that is above every other name. Give them breakthrough in every area of their life. I declare breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Father, today, in the name of Jesus, I declare spiritual breakthrough. In the name of Jesus, I declare, first of all, spiritual breakthrough. In the name of Jesus, I declare you will break forth in the name of Jesus. If you believe, you shout amen. Uh -huh. That's how we do it. I declare spiritual breakthrough in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every area of your life that you are expecting spiritual breakthrough, I declare it in the name of Jesus. I declare it in the name of Jesus Christ. Those that are trusting God for housing breakthrough, I hear that. Housing breakthrough. I say, let's go in the name of Jesus. Breakthrough in regard to housing, financial breakthrough, I will in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I declare it. I declare it. I declare it. In the name of Jesus. I declare it. I declare it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Spiritual breakthrough. I declare it. If you believe, shout aloud, amen. Spiritual breakthrough in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Financial breakthrough in the mighty name of Jesus. I say financial breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Business breakthrough, I declare it in the name of Jesus. New job breakthrough in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. New job, new job, new job. Better job, better job, better job, better businesses. I declare it, 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 I declare it in the name of Jesus. If you say amen, he shall be sold. I say if you say amen, he shall be sold. New venture, new in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I declare it, it shall be so. Multiple breakthrough, multiple breakthrough, in the name of Jesus, Christ. your family, salvation in your family, in the mighty name of Jesus. The Ashake Pokopa, deliverance in your family, I said, deliverance in your family. I declare deliverance in the name of Jesus. Every spirit that been tormenting your family, I command it in the name of Jesus. Go! 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. Spirit of fear, I curse you. Fear, spirit of fear must go in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says, this is the confidence that we have in him when we ask anything according to his will. Father, I have asked, I have declared upon your people according to your will. Let it be so in the name of Jesus. Let it be so in the name of Jesus. Every dose of opportunities that have been shot by the enemy that been delayed by the enemy. The Bible says in Revelation 37, 38, he that has the key of David, that open door that no man can shut. Father, let every opportunity be open today. As they be open in the name of Jesus. As they be open in the name of Jesus. As they be open in the name of Jesus. Every door that been shut. I command it by the authority of the bloodshed, by the finished work of the cross. Begin to open. Begin to open. Begin to open. Begin to open. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Even today, the Bible says, Yeah, that had the key of David. That open, open door that no man can shut, and shut doors that no man can open. 
doors of sickness I shut you today in the name of Jesus. Doors of disease I shut you down today in the name of Jesus. Doors of infirmity I shut you down in the name of Jesus. Oh, I hear it. Doors of torment I shut you down in the name of Jesus. You spirit of vengeance go! Go! In the name of Jesus, go! You are blessed. I said you are blessed. I said in the name of Jesus, you are blessed. I declare you are blessed by the blessed. You are blessed by the blessed. In the name of Jesus Christ. What God has released to you today, I declare you will see manifestations. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. We bless you. In Jesus' name. Come on. Somebody bless him. Come on. Somebody bless him. Yeah. Hey. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you. Father, we thank you. Come and begin to thank him. Come and begin to thank him. We bless you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. I see a neck pain. Be healed in Jesus' name. You don't need to come out. Who is that? Be healed in Jesus' name. I see it. Neck pain. But the authority of the finished work of the cross, by the 39 stripes that Jesus took on the cross, be healed in Jesus' name. Migraine headache, be healed in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody is struggling for transitioning for a new career. New career. Who is that? I see a few people. At least I see about eight people. I say, in the name of Jesus Christ, may the Lord give you sign this week. May the Lord lead you this week. In the name of Jesus Christ. May it come to fruition. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. Elbow pain be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. We bless you in Jesus' name. Can we say amen? Amen. Come on, let's clap our hands and give God praise. I'm almost finished. I have an assignment today, honest. God wants me to give you a scripture. I'm going to take that as offering. For the next seven days, I want you to begin to spread that scripture. It works. It works. In regards to giving, tithes, and offering. Second Corinthians 9 8, please write it down and begin to read it and pray it and declare it. give it to them. Maybe they can put it on the screen. Second Corinthians 9, 8. Second Corinthians 9, 8. Even before you go, I want to make a prayer for this country. Father, we just pray for America that this unity and shooting and killing one another is not of God. It doesn't matter who will be the president. It doesn't matter who's in charge. Killing and shooting we condemn it in the name of Jesus Christ. Doesn't matter, no shooting Trump, no shooting Biden or anybody. Pelosi also, the, the husband, they put armor on his, his head. No, what is going on, church? We got to pray. That is not allowed. We rebuke that in Jesus' name. America should not be experiencing that anymore. And it's okay if you don't like Trump, don't shoot him. It's okay if you don't like Biden, don't shoot him. No, that is not of God. We condemn it in the name of Jesus Christ. It's the work of the devil. It is the work of the devil. So we declare no more in Jesus' name. We pray for peace in America. We pray for unity in America. We pray their election will be successful. There will be no shooting, no killing in the name of Jesus Christ. No, doesn't matter who you vote for. I'm not do, do too much of politics. I don't do too good in it. I don't. But shooting, no, we don't want that. That is not of God. 
we come there next week. In Jesus' name. All right, 2 Corinthians 8, 9, 8. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. Please, I want you to pray this week. For God to make all grace abound towards me. Towards me. You are giving. You are tithing. You should have the grace of God. The grace of God is upon you. Always having all sufficiency. In all things. In all things. Come on church. I give you an assignment and you will see great things begin to happen in your life. We need the grace of God. Also grace in giving. That's what I'm talking about. It's in giving. So give me the grace to pay your ten and give your offerings. God is able. Come on, tell your neighbor. God is able to make all grace abound towards me that I may always have all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance in every good work. Pray for abundance. All sufficiency. It comes by the grace of God. During giving. As you give and you pay your tithe, you should not struggle in life. No, you should not. You are giving. You are supporting the work of the ministry. For God to make what? All grace. What is all grace? All grace. There's no other interpretation. All grace. Not only grace to receive. Not only grace to give. Grace for healing. Grace for deliverance. Grace for abundance. All grace. Come on, let's pray that. Amen. And if you don't have a job, it's the one that gave the gift to it. Seed to the sower. Amen. Tell him to give a job so you can partake. Amen. Amen. You cannot be giving and don't have all sufficiency. Amen. Amen. So that you don't eat what you see, you eat what you want. Eating what you see is lack because you don't have option. You eat what you want. I have chicken at home, but today I don't feel like eating chicken. Today I want to eat lobster and fish. Oh, today I want only to eat snack. And it had to be three pounds plus. That's all sufficiency. So eat what you see. Oh God. Peanut butter and jelly. Church, can I talk to you? Pray for all sufficient. You are a giver, right? This scripture works. Promise you in the name of Jesus, as you pray it this week, you will begin to see the grace of God abound towards you. To make it abound towards you, you don't need to go to it, it will come to you. Come on, I'm excited for for you. You don't know we have, we have all. Be able, just stay where you are and declare it and pray it and trust God and it will make it abound towards you. It will look for you. Come to your house. No devil can stop it. No body can stop it. It's good. Because I am a giver. I am a tither. I am a sinner. All grace. All grace. All grace. 
All grace abound towards me. All grace and all sufficient. Be all sufficient in all things. In all things may have an abundance in every good work. Yeah. 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 Oh God. Oh God, I'm excited for you. I, I release over you today. Receive God's grace to give your tithes, to give your offering with joy and thanksgiving and enjoy and and enjoy an abundance in all things. I say all things. All things. All things. In all things. All sufficient. All grace come upon you. He's looking for you. You don't need to go to it. He's coming towards you. And he's coming. And he's coming. And he's coming. And he's looking for you. He's looking for tithers, forgivers. He's going to locate you. If you hide, he will find you. If you hide, okay, you run, he's going to chase you. I say he's going to chase you. I say he's going to. Oh, God, I'm telling you. Oh, God, I'm telling you. He will chase you. He will locate you in the name of Jesus. I declare that poverty is broken. Poverty is broken. Somebody shout, yeah, yeah. Abundance, oh Father, I release abundance over you. I feel an anointing. This is strange. Abundance over you. Grace to tithe, grace to give, and grace to receive all sufficiency, abundance in all things, in everything, in everything, everything, in the name of Jesus. And it will come to pass in the name of Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. 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 I prophesy from today on the grace of God will come towards you because you are faithful. I pray that the grace of God will abound towards you. The grace of God will locate you. Oh, only two amen. I said the grace of God will locate you. If you run, it will follow you and pass you and capture you and the grace will remain over your life and the overflow and the overflow of his grace will impart your children children, children children, children your children and your children, children even your neighbor I say your neighbor I say your neighbor, I say your neighbor, they will see all grace, all grace. Someone say all grace, someone say all grace, all grace, all sufficiency, abundance in all things. I declare over my life, so shall it be in Jesus' name. Somebody shout! Hey! 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 All grace! All grace! All grace! All grace! All grace! So I'm out. I'm the all sufficient. Oh God! Receive the grace. Receive the grace. Receive the grace. Say, I receive it. Re receive it. I receive it. In the name of Jesus. Now, there's also grace to give you a job so that you can partake. 
I declare for those people who receive it now in Jesus' name. I got to go. Let's take our time. You have our time. Oh, grace. When you give your and don't feel like all oh, grace. Why did they all grace to abound? Trust me. You say all grace, all sufficient, abundance to come over me. So as you tithe, as you tithe and give, you will experience joy, happiness, all grace to abound towards you. You have all sufficient in the name of Jesus Christ. To have an abundance in every area of your life. You will not eat what you see. You eat what you want. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God will get you to a level that you have to choose. Even when you get to a level time to come, you have garages. You have to choose which one am I driving today. All grace. All grace. As you continue to tithe and to give. Anointing of abundance. I feel an anointing. I, I'm going to dismiss. If, if you if you want all grace prayer, come to me after service. I feel an anointing. I feel an anointing. I open my eyes today. I mean, I told my wife a vision, a big old bread, and I didn't ask for bread. It was massive. It was very big. And what came to me? He prepared a table. Big bread. I'm serious. It was huge. And I thought, man, God just put the bread in front of me. You know, I'm hungry. God will prepare something great for you. And God will prepare you to receive in Jesus' name. You have your tithe and offering. Are baby, shake it. Let's give our tithe. All grace. Please, I want you to read that scripture and meditate with it all week. Read it. Declare it. God is able to make. I will teach that another day. It didn't say just give. Make. So it was you. You didn't get that. Make. In other words, it's customized for you. Make towards you. He make it. Customize. Just as what belongs to me, it belongs to me. You may the Lord bless you. I uh, feel great anointing of abundance today. I feel an anointing of overflow today. We have our tithe and our offering. I'm going to bless it. I'm going to bless it. Wait to give on the screen. And after the sound pull back the scripture. I want to pray that scripture. That's what I want to pray today over everybody that they're paying their tithe. And they, you know, this is our season. This is our season. This is our time. This is our time. Amen. Don't worry about the economy of America. Our economy is not from here. Amen. It's from heaven. The Bible says all good and perfect gifts come from heaven and what? Above what I have learned when things are difficult for the old world, that's the time God bless his own people. He wants to make a statement. Amen. We have an offering. We have an offering. We have an envelope. I want to bless it with all grace. All grace. Let us give. Can you put the scripture back? God is able to make all grace abound towards you. So, Father, I pray for everyone, those that are giving, paying their tithe and offering, and these people always do that. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that all grace, grace is supernatural ability that supersedes our own strength, our own ability. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ as they tithe and offering and continue to support this ministry. I pray that all grace will abound towards them. In the mighty name of Jesus, in 
all sufficient in the name of Jesus, in all things, in the name of Jesus, and they will have abundance in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I also declare John 10, 10, part B over them. God said, Jesus said, the enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Jesus said that I came, I came, that you might have life. And if I say, have it abundantly, until it overflows. If it's not overflowing, God ain't finished yet. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will experience overflow. Overflow in your life. Every area of your life. In the name of Jesus. But I thank you. I also especially the giving from nothing. In this side. They give it from nothing. He said, I love this. I want grace. I don't have a job. I can't give a tithe, but I'm giving grace. I'm, I'm give, I want to give something. I tell you, if you are the one, you will see the hands of God over your life this week in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. There's something. Stop. Remember the widow. Tamin who gives sacrificially. And don't get me wrong, thank God for all the people that are giving. Jesus said that woman gave all that she had. So how do you determine that? You determine sacrificial giving after you gave how much you have left. How much? And I saw that I felt that I can feel the pull from that person. Is you? God will surprise you. And so you are nothing. God will surprise you. And see it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, let us stand and bring our offering. You have to come with this dance. All grace to abound dance. Amen. The direction of the usher. The man at the back, come on, we finish. <laughs> oh my God. God. All grace. Yes, ma'am. I'm not going back, I'm moving ahead. I'm here to declare to you my past is over in you. All things are made new. Surrender my life to Christ. I'm moving, moving forward, forward, I'm moving, moving forward. Praise you from the rising, from the 
let us stand as you have given your tithe and offering with joy and thanksgiving. I pray that you will enjoy an abundance everything that you do in the mighty name of Jesus. May you begin to experience it now in the name of Jesus. But I will thank that the source of your income will not be shut down, but actually increase. I pray that God would give you streams of income that you will have all sufficiency in all things. May you have abundance in every work that you do. In the name of Jesus. Now, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and the Lord give you peace. Let the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, let it guide your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. Let the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the sweet, sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, let the rest, let it remain, let it abound with you now and forevermore. And the church of Jesus Christ will shout. Amen. 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 God bless you. Before you go, I just want to thank. Uh, we have a new ministry now. Maybe you don't know. It's called the Immaculate Cleaning Ministry. Amen. I really want to bless God for them. They always make the sanctuary clean. Can we bless God for them? Can we bless God for them? We have, you know. About four people there now. We're going to have more people to come to help to clean the house of the Lord. They're doing an excellent job. That's why I see everything clean. They were here yesterday for hours and hours. Only four teams, they you know, interchange. You know, I just want you to know they're doing an excellent job. And if you are interested, you want to join the team to clean, please come and we we'll direct you to the leader. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We love you with the love of God. We see you Friday. Amen. God bless you.